What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. WWE Monday Night Raw review for last night's show, April 14th, 2014. Live last night from Birmingham, Alabama. Now, WWE built this show, um, or built this show around the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, late last week, WWE announced everybody that they were going to do an Ultimate Warrior tribute show, but nobody really knew what the WWE had planned. If you guys have been living under a rock for the last week, we all know Jim Helwig, a.k.a. the Ultimate Warrior, passed away suddenly following his last appearance on Monday Night Raw last week due to a massive heart attack. The autopsy reports came back yesterday and revealed that it was a massive heart attack, which I had knew from the very beginning. A lot of people, I did research, a lot of people actually had predicted that Jim Helwig was going to die of a massive heart attack in his early to mid-50s, back when he was still an active wrestler, just because of the life he lived. Now, the autopsy report said that uh, there was no drugs, there was no alcohol, and there was no steroids involved in his death at the time it happened. Who's to say the life Jim Helwig lived before as an active wrestler Who's to say that all the actions that he took then didn't play a part in his death now? You, re you can't really say that steroids and drugs didn't play a part in it now. Obviously, it did. Ultimate Warrior was a known steroid user, just like everybody else back in the 80s when the WWE and that whole scandal went down. Obviously, that had a part to do in the passing of Jim Helwig. But right now... It was about celebrating his life. Last night it was about celebrating his life and his storied career. One that's never going to be duplicated by anybody. There will never be another Ultimate Warrior. And I was over at my friend John's house um, this past weekend. You know, I had a few beers. I was there with my girlfriend and uh, my brother Frank, Mr. Legionary. And, you know, we were sharing a few beers. My friend John just moved into a smaller apartment before he... Uh, he found something that he actually liked. He's living there with his girlfriend right now. And after we ate, we had some dinner, we had some drinks, and we were watching The Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 6. And we sat there and watched the match in pretty much silence because we just took it all in. We, you know, we were all huge Ultimate Warrior fans growing up, you know. I loved and admired The Ultimate Warrior. I, like I always said, I said this a few times if you guys remember. I was more of an Ultimate Warrior guy than I was a Hulk Hogan guy. And watching Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior again, you know, being me now, this present day in 2014, it's still an amazing experience if you're a WWE fan. Nothing like that's ever been done before, especially at that time during WrestleMania 6. You had the Intercontinental Championship, which was highlighted as, you know, the next best thing to the WWF Championship. The Intercontinental Champion was always that that step closer to the WWF Championship. It was the number one, it was the true number one contender for that title. And that's what the Ultimate Warrior represented. You know, I would go out on a limb and say the Ultimate Warrior was one of the greatest Intercontinental Champions of all time just because of who he was and the character that he was and the prestige that he brought to that belt. It was the Ultimate Warrior and he was carrying around the next best title to the WWF Championship. And then you have Hulk Hogan, the WWF Champion, and these two forces are colliding at WrestleMania 6. Nothing like that's been done before. Champion versus champion. Title for title. You know, whoever wins is a dual champion. Nothing like that's ever been done before. Now, the match wasn't the greatest wrestling match of all time. It wasn't, you know, something to uh, admire in the ring. But the way Hulk Hogan... An Ultimate Warrior can captivate and control a crowd is what made them great. The Ultimate Warrior commands attention every time he's in the ring, and that's exactly what he did better than anybody. Ultimate Warrior is a true icon in the sport. He will never, ever be forgotten. There will never be another Ultimate Warrior. No matter how hard anyone wants to duplicate what he did, they will never. Just like the Ultimate... Just like, uh... Uh, there's not going to be another Ultimate Warrior. There's not going to be another Undertaker. There will never be another Bret Hart. There will never be another Stone Cold. There will never be another Rock. HBK. The list goes on and on. 
But last night was all about the Ultimate Warrior. And what the, what the WWE did last night, I said this on Twitter. If a few tears were not shed during that introduction, during that 10-bell salute, you are not a true wrestling fan. I don't give a fuck how old I am. I could be, uh, I could be fucking 60 and still watching the sport. If someone that I've admired for years and years on my television on a weekly basis is no longer with us and passes away, like the Ultimate Warrior did, you have to feel compassion for that individual. And that's exactly what happened last night. I, I fought back just bawling out during that introduction. And I'm not afraid to admit it. I was a huge Ultimate Warrior guy growing up. I was all over the Ultimate Warrior. I, I had... Uh, the, the wrestling buddies, I had the Stretch Armstrong figures, I had, I had everything regarding the Ultimate Warrior. The foam intercontinental title, everything. I, I tried to mimic, I wanted to be the Ultimate Warrior, you know? These were our childhood heroes growing up. And what the WWE did last night was the definition of class. Vince McMahon standing front, you've seen him a few times on camera, front and center. Amongst all the active WWE wrestlers on the roster. And the video package and the video tribute that they did last night. Really made me just want to just legitimately cry. That's how beautiful it was. But I fought back tears because I really didn't want my girlfriend to just sit next to me and see me crying. Over the Ultimate Warrior. You know. There's some sense of uh, machismo there. But uh, deep down I, I, I legitimately just wanted to cry. I feel sorry for what happened. I feel sorry for his daughters. And they showed a clip of his daughters kissing him on stage at the Hall of Fame. The music went perfectly with the video package. And it was absolute class by the old, by, uh, by the WWE in regards to the Ultimate Warrior. Everyone on the active roster had Ultimate Warrior face paint t-shirts. Which I'm pretty much going to have to get one because I want one of those. And uh, the 10 Bell Salute. I am absolutely ecstatic that the Birmingham, Alabama crowd maintained their composure during the 10-bell salute. You could actually fucking hear someone burp in that crowd. It was so fucking quiet during that 10-bell salute. That's the way it should have been. That's the class that everyone... That's the respect everyone had for the Ultimate Warrior. And I admire that from the crowd last night. You could actually hear someone fucking burp in that crowd. It was so fucking quiet. You could hear someone breathe. That's the way it should have been for the Warrior. And then after the 10-bell salute, the entire WWE roster started a, a Warrior chant, which was, which was great. The whole thing was just beautiful. You know, the first 10 minutes of the show dedicated to the Ultimate Warrior. Absolute class by the WWE. I commend them for that. And when these things do happen, nobody does it better. And nobody shows that much appreciation and genuine emotion than the WWE. I do commend them on that. They get a full thumbs up from me. During that entire tribute to the Ultimate Warrior. The rest of the show actually revolved around a WWE Intercontinental Championship tournament. Now, I love tournaments, you know, but you need to have um, some kind of reasoning behind it. You need to have some kind of reasoning for the tournament. Listen, the Intercontinental title needs to be brought up and needs to be brought back into that light, into that limelight, you know. The Warrior had it, he made it popular, he made it a wanted belt, and that's what the WWE needs to try and recreate here. And I thought going in that they did this for the Warrior because the Ultimate Warrior is one of the most known, or the most, one of the most notable Intercontinental Champions of all time. Maybe that's why they did it, but I'm not really sure. But the way the tournament uh, is looking right now, you know, I've always said that the WWE should bring back the King of the Ring. If I was to mimic a King of the Ring, it would look exactly like this tournament. Maybe minus one or two guys in this tournament. I would probably take out Del Rio and I would take out Jack Swagger. But the King of the Ring tournament, this is probably the closest we're going to get to a King of the Ring tournament. I've always been lobbying for the WWE to bring back the King of the Ring tournament. A one-night tournament. Build it around that. The winner of that is the number one contender for the WWE Championship. At SummerSlam. It doesn't get any better than that. King of the Ring is one of the best ideas for a pay-per-view. You know, it, it was unbelievable. Just look at the 1993 King of the Ring, which I always go back and reference when Bret Hart won the King of the Ring. 
unbelievable fucking tournament. Just the whole the whole thing about just wrestling three times in one night and you know getting to that point of becoming king. You can't get any better than that for pay per view. And then obviously you go on to fight for the championship at SummerSlam. It books itself. But the Intercontinental Title Tournament last night, you know, it, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to the second round matches actually more than the first round matches. You had Rob Van Dam versus Del Rio. Rob Van Dam won to advance to the second round. Um, he got the five star frog splash for the win. It was a good match. You know, nothing to you know cry home about. But uh, RVD advances. You know, he's in the second round of the tournament. It was a good match. But like I said, this is the closest we're gonna get to a King of the Ring because I don't think the WWE is gonna do the King of the Ring anytime soon. Um, we also had in the tournament, we had Cesaro versus Mark Henry in a first round match. Uh, Cesaro got the easy win here in about four minutes with the neutralizer. Um, I don't like Cesaro's lack of theme music. And I said this on, uh, on Twitter last night, I'm not buying it right now. It's certainly something to get used to. Uh, it de definitely reeks of old school. Uh, you know, there's, there was a few guys a few notable guys who came out with no theme music. But um, I'm really on the fence now about this whole Cesaro-Paul Heyman thing. Because you have Paul Heyman come out and, uh, you know, reiterize to everybody that Brock Lesnar is the conqueror of the streak. Yes, we know this. And that's going to make Brock Lesnar probably one of the most hated men in the history of, of WWE. And then Paul Heyman alongside him because he's associated with Lesnar. But I, I really don't see right now, especially after this week. I was okay last week with the New Orleans crowd because the way the New Orleans crowd received... Antonio Cesaro, it made me believe that, okay, he's on his way to being a face, and that Paul Heyman's going to do a great job with Lesnar as a heel and Cesaro as a face. Maybe they cross paths one, one way or another uh, within the year, but last night, I, I think Cesaro was more heel than he was face. Now, that, that concerns me. You know, he's got no theme music. You know, he doesn't have the whole we the people thing anymore. That's going to be reserved for Jack Swagger, but uh, I don't see how this is going to work. You know, the WWE really needs to, you know, stamp it on what they want to do with him. Is he going to be a face or is he going to be a heel? I don't want none of this in-between thing with Cesaro. I think he makes a better face than he does a heel because the way the crowd receives him in the ring, uh, I think it's more of a face than it is a heel. He's only got that heel persona because of Paul Heyman and the way Paul Heyman is. Maybe this wasn't really a good idea for Paul Heyman uh, to be associated with Cesaro. He was already on his way to becoming a, a top superstar anyway with Zeb Coulter. But then you think of it, who do you want Cesaro with if you have the choice, Paul Heyman or Zeb Coulter? Obviously, 10 times out of 10, it's going to be Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman takes superstars and just elevates them to that next level. That's why he's there. That's what he does. But the, w but the WWE really needs to uh, send it home to the crowd. Listen, he's going to be this, and you know he's not going to be this. Being that he's, he's going to be a face, and he's not going to be a heel. Hopefully, that they know what, that we know. the WWE knows what they're doing with him. I would rather see him as a, as a face than a heel. Let me know what you guys think. The rest of the tournament went as follows. Jack Swagger versus Sheamus in a first-round tournament match. That was actually a very good match. Very competitive. Very stiff. Uh, Sheamus got the win over Jack Swagger. I thought at one moment Jack Swagger was going to get the win. He had the ankle lock. I thought Sheamus was going to tap out. But after, uh, Sheamus did get the win on that. Uh, and uh, that was that. So Sheamus advances to the second round. And then we had Wade Barrett versus... Um, Dolph Ziggler and Wade Barrett won that match. I thought Ziggler was actually going to go on to win that. Uh, obviously, they didn't want to have face versus face because then Sheamus would have had to fight uh, Dolph Ziggler in the second round, which, you know, it really doesn't matter who fights who. You know, it really doesn't matter, but I'm glad Wade Barrett got the win. I do want to see Wade Barrett elevated to that next level. He's been out way too long. Uh, he's great in the ring. He's got a great presence. He's got a great look. He's great on the mic. The Bad News Barrett gimmick seems to be working for him. He seems to be enjoying it. Um, the crowd really needs to get behind him as well. He's another one of those in-betweeners. I don't know whether he's going to work better as a heel or as a face. I would actually like to see Wade Barrett as a face, to be quite honest with you. Keep him the same way. Give him the same demeanor. Give him the same attitude. The same, the same mic presence. And just have him be a face. It works. It works for me. You know, but the, the New Orleans, we got spoiled with the New Orleans crowd. You know, they, they, those are the kind of crowds we want to see weekly on Monday Night Raw. We know it's not going to happen. You know, these Midwest states like Alabama and uh, uh, and Kansas and Tennessee and Nashville, all these other fucking, these, these Midwest cities, you know, they really don't appreciate the wrestling product like the East crowd, uh, the East Coast crowd does or the West Coast crowd. 
You know, it's always in between. It's always, you know, it's always cheer for this and then, you know, sit quiet for this. There was even one point during the fucking, uh, the Ziggler versus Barrett match where they were chanting CM Punk. I mean, really? Why are you chanting CM Punk? Are you that bored with the fucking match? This is what I don't get about. It, it was the same thing a couple weeks ago. I believe they were in a Midwest state. Why are you chanting CM Punk? Are you that bored with Ziggler? You don't appreciate the fucking work that these guys are doing in the ring that you're chanting for a guy that's not coming back anytime soon? I don't understand that. That pissed me off last night. Like, I, I turned away to go get uh, to go grab an iced tea from the refrigerator. And all I hear, I coming back, I hear CM Punk. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? That's the shit I don't like. Especially with guys like Ziggler and Barrett who deserve the attention that they're going to command in the ring. Stupid. I just don't believe it. So stupid by the fucking Alabama crowd, man. That just, that just fucking irritates me. And then the biggest thing of the night... Actually, before I talk about uh, what happened with uh, Triple H and, uh, and the Shield, uh, we had uh, Divas Champion Paige versus Alicia, Alicia Fox. Paige looks great in the ring. Paige looks great in the ring. She look, she, For the first time ever, I'm going to say this about a woman wrestler. They actually know what they're doing in the ring. She knows how to hit her spots... She knows how to flow in the ring mechanically, and she won. I, I think Paige really needs to hold on to this title and defend this title on a weekly basis just so that she proves to everybody that she can hang on the WWE main roster, that you make her the face of the Divas division, and you build around her. You got some great talent down in NXT. I'm actually excited to see women's wrestling, man. You know, when Bla uh, when Alundra Blaze was back in the WWE, and then you had Bull Nakano. And you had Lita, and you had the Cat, you had Marlena, Sable, Sonny. Now, Sonny wasn't an active wrestler, though, but she was there. Uh, Trish Stratus, you know, Ivory. Those are women that knew how to wrestle. This is what I want the WWE to go back and do. Build it around Paige. Maybe they bring in fucking uh, Karma, which I would love to see. Build the Divas division around Paige. She obviously knows what she's doing. She's young. She's not that bad to look at, you know? Give her the ball, let her run with it. AJ's going to be around. AJ's going to be around, and that's going to be a feud to set up eventually for SummerSlam. It's going to be a damn good match. We want to see Divas wrestling on TV. Good Divas wrestling. And by good Divas wrestling, I mean what Paige did last night. Alicia Fox held her own. She's not that bad. Pa can you imagine Paige versus Natalia for the Divas Championship? Can you imagine just watching that? 10, 15 minutes of... Two women who know what they're doing in the ring and not fumbling around fucking botch after botch. This is what I want to see. Great job by Paige last night. I was really impressed by what she did in the ring last night on Monday Night Raw. Great shit. And the entire, the entire Monday Night Raw last night, besides the whole Ultimate Warrior thing, they showed tributes of, uh, of, of him throughout the night, highlights of his most important matches. They showed him beating the Honky Tonk Man. Uh, in, in 30 seconds, and they showed uh, clips of him and, and Hogan. You know, all throughout the night they did that, which was very classy by the WWE. And the whole night besides Warrior was a, about Randy Orton, Batista, and Triple H. Now, Daniel Bryan wasn't there last night because he was out on his honeymoon, which is understandable. He deserves it. The show obviously missed that one piece to the puzzle. You could actually feel it. It was a little... It was a little down last night with Brian not being there, but it's okay. This is a one-week thing. He'll be back next week on Monday Night Raw. He's out celebrating his anniversary. He just got married. It's that simple. But last night, we seen the reformation of Evolution. Now, I was never big on Evolution. Never big on Evolution. I thought they were incredibly overrated, to be honest with you. They really didn't do anything that stood out to me where I would put them as one of the best groups or best stables in WWE. You know, obviously you had four powerhouse names. Triple H, Randy Orton, Ric Flair, and Batista. They made a good group. But what kind of impact did they really leave on the WWE besides their name recognition? You really got to think about it. What kind of impact did they, did they, you know, leave on the WWE besides that they were all four Hall of Famers. Nothing. To me, they were incredibly overrated. You had the Uso brothers, 
versus Randy Orton and Batista again in a rematch from last week in a non-title match. Now, this is where I find a problem with this. I'm okay with the rematch. I'm okay with the Uso brothers trying to get revenge. But at what point are we going to hear from the Uso brothers about what Randy Orton and Batista did to them last week? Why aren't they vocal about being destroyed last week by Randy Orton and Batista? Why? You know, they're the tag team champions. They don't have a fucking voice. They don't have uh, the ability to grab a microphone and let the WWE fans know. You know, this is what we want. We want a rematch. This is why we want it. Plain and simple. This is what's going to happen. We're going to get we're gonna get our revenge. We're going to kick their ass. You know, is it too hard for the WWE to incorporate some kind of uh, communication between the Uso brothers about why Randy Orton and Batista, you know, or what, why they did what they did last week? I don't understand. But the match this week, a rematch, didn't last too long, being that the Shield interfered. Now, Randy Orton and Batista running away from the Shield. Okay? Triple H, before this match even went on, said that all three of them collectively cannot be beat. Randy Orton said he wants to be WWE champion. Batista said he's here for the championship. This is his fight to win and his alone regarding Triple H, or talking about Triple H. Triple H can take care of the Shield on his own. They want nothing to do with it. And then after the Shield chased away Orton and Batista... Triple H is seen in the back as uh, Orton and Batista walking together in the back locker room. Triple H uh, pretty much said, listen, I told you so. You know, and then obviously at the end of the night, um, the Shield went against 11 or 12 mid-card jobbers. Uh, it was pretty much uh, 12 against 3. And then obviously we've seen the reformation of Evolution. The crowd was pretty much flat for this, which I was shocked. There you go, Alabama crowd. Great way to uh, sour a pretty decent moment, is what I got to say about that. After the Shield was down, you know, you've seen, uh, obviously they got their ass kicked by, by 12 guys. There's no way the Shield is going to overcome 12 guys, no matter how, how good they are. Then all of a sudden, Randy Orton and Batista and Triple H come down. Evolution is reformed. You hear the fucking music go off, which was a pretty damn cool moment. I always enjoyed their, their theme music. They come down, and the end of the show uh, comes to be with Evolution um, pretty much standing tall above the shield. Now, you see in one point, Roman Reigns crawling towards Triple H, and Triple H screaming into the microphone, Get up! Get up! Show me what you are! Show me what you're about! You know? So, Roman Reigns crawling, trying to climb up Triple H, grasping at Triple H before he levels him with a pedigree. This entire thing is going to lead to a Triple H versus Roman Reigns feud going into SummerSlam. Book it right now, mark my words. Reference this video by the time we get to the SummerSlam pay-per-view. Telling you right now. They're not going to highlight Roman Reigns looking weak and crawling towards Triple H before receiving a pedigree. They're not going to highlight Roman Reigns out of all the other members of the Shield in that one segment, if Triple H is not going to be going one-on-one -on -one with Roman Reigns, I'm telling you right now, book it for SummerSlam. That's going to be Triple H's next feud, okay? Obviously, with Extreme Rules coming up, we got Evolution versus The Shield. I thought they were going to go with Kane, Batista, and Randy Orton versus The Shield, but apparently, they're going to go with Evolution itself, Triple H, Batista, and Randy Orton versus The Shield. That's going to be something to see. It's going to be a damn good fucking match, especially if there's a stipulation behind it. Kane, I'm not too thrilled. Uh, they're going back to the masked Kane. Stephanie got in his face calling him pathetic and weak and a, f a shell of his former self. Obviously, he's going back to the mask gimmick. No more corporate Kane. Corporate Kane is no more. I think they're going to set up a Kane versus Daniel Bryan feud for Extreme Rules, which is a little bit underwhelming for Daniel Bryan's first title defense on a major pay-per-view. But we'll see how that goes. You know, if there's someone to have a good match with, obviously it's Daniel Bryan. It'll be something to see. It'll be a decent match, but it's not going to be screaming main event. You know? It's not a main event worthy match to close a pay-per-view. Obviously, Evolution's going to close the pay-per-view. But that's where we're headed towards Extreme Rules. Obviously, John Cena as well and Bray Wyatt. I forgot to mention them. Bray Wyatt cut a beautiful fucking pride. I swear to God, every time this man holds a microphone, you just gotta fucking watch what he says. 
the way he acts in the ring, the way he just portrays himself on camera. John Cena looked feeble and weak. Obviously, the one thing he did mention was that uh, he mentioned something about him receiving a push and that nobody wants to see it. That was funny. Everything else, everything else about John Cena's promo last night was fucking cheesy and gay. I'm telling you right now. Nothing stood out until he actually got a little bit serious and used a little bit more of a serious tone. And then at that point, he challenged Bray Wyatt to a steel cage match at Extreme Rules, which is pretty much booked. Um, so you're going to see John Cena versus Bray Wyatt in a steel cage at Extreme Rules, along with Daniel Bryan versus Kane, which I'm assuming will be for the WWE Championship, and then Evolution versus The Shield. Those are the three matches that we got. Obviously, the winner of the Intercontinental Tournament will fight Biggie Langston at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. I'm going with Cesaro to win this entire thing. I would like Wade Barrett to win the IC title, but I do think Cesaro will be the winner of this tournament, uh, just so that they solidify his push and uh, push him further. I think Cesaro can bring some prestige back to that title. Great in the ring. Uh, He's got Paul Heyman with him, so it does make sense. But other than that, guys, this entire show was a very enjoyable Monday Night Raw. Um, It was built around the Warrior and the um, reformation of Evolution. So we got uh, a little bit of a build towards Extreme Rules and then honoring, obviously, the Ultimate Warrior and his storied career and his last moments on WWE TV. So I got nothing to complain about. Uh, The show did what it needed to do. WWE needs to get right back on track next week with Daniel Bryan returning. Uh, we got to see some more push towards Extreme Rules. I want to see how the undercard is going to be developed on Extreme Rules. But it's looking up uh, It's looking up for Extreme Rules. It looks like, it's looking like a pretty decent pay-per-view, so it should be exciting. But if you guys missed my WWE off the script number 8, link is down below in the description. I know I said on that video I was going to do a Ultimate Warrior tribute video behind the mic. Um, I wanted to wait till the tribute show. If I do have some time this week, I will do it. I know I said I was going to do it this week, and I apologize if you guys were waiting on that. But uh, if I do have some time this week, I will do that and talk about what the Ultimate Warrior meant to me. But you pretty much got bits and pieces of what I'm going to talk about in this video, in the intro, and then on Off the Script last week if you guys missed that. So, you know, to me, there might not be a reason to do it, but if you guys want to see it, please let me know down in the description. All right, you let me know what you guys think. But until then, guys, I will see you guys on Off the Script number 9 this Saturday morning, as always. And remember... Fuck those other guys. This right here is your number one source for all your WWE news and opinions right here on YouTube.com. I'll see you guys on Saturday for Off the Script. Take care, and until then, this is JD. I'll talk to you guys very soon.